it was A, B, C, and six days in the house. So nine days out in the uh, in, in the wild, searching all these places. A couple of weeks later, going to the house for six days, come out. Ten days later, he's indicted. Interesting sequence how that happened. So something must have happened. And, and don't know if it was a tip. Don't you know what brought them to that location? We'll probably know more on Thursday. You know, I would have sworn if people had asked me years ago, of course, before the arrest of Rex Humanola, I would have said this has to be two or three guys that committed these. Now I'm starting to believe, like many people are, this is all the work of one guy, of Rex Human. Bobby, what your thoughts? Well, yeah, look, the last serial killer case that I worked in the FBI, um, we arrested him in 2011, but he had killed people in, in upstate New York, Vermont, um, Washington State, all over the country, really. And we arrested him. He had killed a girl in, in Alaska. And that's the body that I recovered when I went up to Alaska. Uh, she was dismembered and stuff. So nothing really surprises me when it comes to the scope and the years these guys operate, especially when you get a guy and he's arrested, you know, like the Golden State Killer, for example, when you arrest a guy in an advanced age, um, usually they did not start at an older age killing people. And especially if they, in my case, they would, he was dismembering. Um, usually they've been at it for a long, long time. Um, and it's hard to believe that somebody could be so evil to so many people for so long, but we've seen it again and again. And so, you know, when I saw 11, 10 or 11 bodies in Gilgo, um, and I grew up not far from there, um, you know, I never, yeah, you thought- were a suspect too. <laughs> I was actually from West Babylon, which <laughs> is, is from in this case. Um, and, and so I, I always knew the possibility was that he had other bodies, other dumping grounds, you know, in other places. I just, I just figured that might be a possibility because at, at 60 at, or 55 or 60 years old, you know, he's probably been doing this for 20 plus years. Um, and, and, and that's a long time. And that's probably the, uh, the opportunity to get a lot of bodies on him. Uh, Chief Boyce, um, that you know, we we spoke about modus operandi, signature, and staging. The staging part in these two, with uh, excuse me, with uh, Valerie Mack and Jessica Taylor, the fact that he did dismember them and then did dump them in other locations is that done specifically to throw off the investigators, or is that done for some psychosexual crazy reason that he has in his mind? Yeah, so he definitely went to. Um to change, to hinder our identification of Jessica Taylor. I did a deep dive on her today because I thought that she was, you know, she's the one they're going to bring charges on. Don't know if that's true, but that's what I'm guessing right now. She had a tattoo on, on her back. Now, he dismembered her head and her hands. I've had cases like that. Clearly, they're trying to hide out the identification from the police. But they, she, they also, the perpetrator sliced a tattoo on her back. Um, and that's how we identified her. Forensic, um, the Emmy was able to push it together and get a copy of that tattoo. And that's how they, had, uh, I think a DC cop actually identified her from an arrest. Had a heart and something like that on it. And so that's how, with my, with most of my cases, unidentified bodies, tattoos help a lot in making the identification. So that was purposely done. The hands and the head and also the, uh, the tattoo, um, uh, trying to remove it anyway. So yes, he was trying to hide uh, the fact that who she was and where she came from. Um, no one, you know, and you can see why, because I think with, in, in Jessica's case, she was in the Bronx originally and then in Manhattan, which we know what uh, Uriman was. He was a Manhattan architect every day. Don't know, don't know if he met her there, if he is the perpetrator of the crime. Interesting.